In this review, we'll quickly take a look at the standard points for a smartphone, however we will also need to focus more on the Swift's software. The Cyanogen operating system offers a lot of additions to traditional Android. There's too much to cover in depth in one video, however we will overview the features and you can read the extended written review for more detail. So on to the Wiley Fox Swift itself. From the front, the Swift is a basic rectangular slab alongside hundreds of other phones. There's nothing on the main screen to set it apart from other basic phones, aside from the circular earpiece, which is reminiscent of the original Nexus 5. The screen appears a little raised, at first I was worried it could attract damage more readily than others. On closer inspection though, I realised it is set with a plastic lip round the edge, so it's probably not as fragile as I first thought. Wiley Fox have also added Corning Gorilla Glass 3, as well as offering a 12 month unlimited screen replacement service for just £9.99. That's excellent aftermarket value for money, and a great way to attract new users against the competition. After all, no one really goes out of their way to break a screen, so a reasonably priced insurance offer is welcome. The screen itself is a very bright 720p IPS LCD panel, with fairly standard viewing angles. The brightness really is set high as a default, which is excellent for outdoor viewing, although I found myself turning the adaptive brightness off as it seems to settle a bit too bright for my liking when indoors. The slider settings let you take this down much lower than it ever reaches automatically. Plus thanks to Cyanogen's tweaks, you can easily install a brightness slider in the quick settings. Flipping the phone over, we come across a pretty back panel that makes up for the uninspired fascia. The Swift's backplate is a removable thin plastic, which is pretty normal. However, the surface has been topped by a tactile sandstone black material finish. This is smooth in the hand with just a tiny amount of texture and grip to stop being slippy. The very fine mottling effect also catches the night nicely, avoiding the boring block colour effect you can get from some matte finishes. The sandstone effect topper also deals well with scratches. A few weeks in my often heavy-handed possession and there are no obvious marks or gouges, with the dirt and grime of general life quickly wiped clean. Central to the back plate is the rather cool Wiley Fox logo, inset with darker plastic. Cute touch. The Wiley Fox brand name neatly adorns the lower quarter in their signature orange, a complementary colour to the tart greys and countered by the thin metallic orange trim around the camera housing in the top section. All in all, this is a decent adherence to recognisable minimalism. Everything is stripped back, with a bit of branding to differentiate the product. Personally, I would like thin speaker grills on the front side top and bottom, similar to the Moto G and the new Nexus 5X, rather than just at the bottom edge where they can get muffled with a finger in the landscape, but hey, we can't have everything. Camera performance is often where budget devices fall down. When the entire phone in your hand only costs a shade more than a decent point and shoot, you have to set your expectations accordingly. Motorola is still the name to beat down at this price, and their third generation Moto G has upped their camera game significantly, where their previous models have suffered. However, the price tag of the Moto G has also stayed higher. When a phone isn't a flagship, I've learnt to set my bar relatively low for the camera. If I can get some decently exposed indoor and outdoor shots in a few different lighting scenarios, then I am, for the most part, pretty happy. If you really desire excellent camera performance from a smartphone, then you need to be well away from this price range. That's not a bad word against the results of the Swift or other budget devices, far from it. However, we need to keep in mind the £129 price tag firmly when reviewing these images. So on to what the Swift can do. The camera app itself is a creation of the Cyanogen community, developed over several years, rather than the stock Google camera app some might expect. That's already a good start, however, proof is in the testing. The results are okay. Not great, but okay. To be honest, I'm not surprised, and the Cyanogen camera app itself is probably a bit more interesting than the results of the camera itself. Sure, the 13 megapixel Samsung sensor can take some fairly detailed images. Overall though, they're a mixed bag that depends on you getting decent environmental surroundings. Options are available to modify white balance, exposure, though I often found entire shots being a touch muggy or overexposed, difficult to get the, the balancing just where it needs to be. Details are picked out well enough, even with a little bit of motion involved. Colours and lighting always seemed a little bit off. HDR fared significantly better though, and suddenly the warmth of indoor scenes came through, rather than appearing as though they had a kind of filter over the top. Downside to HDR of course is the extra processing time. It's great for shots where you can take the time to line up and snap a few after focusing. However, if you want to take a few quick snapshots and use the automatic mode, the Swift is a pretty basic camera. It's far from terrible, and once you get past the occasional lack of warmth in the final results, the images are detailed enough. There's also a number of preset scene options and some fun filters to play with too. 
For video recording, you can choose the resolution, and if you drop down from 1080p to 720p, you can access 60 frames per second for high speed or slow motion recording. On top of this, there are options to select the video and audio codec being recorded. The Swift gives you MP4, H.264 or H.264 for videos, and the audio options are AAC or AMR NV. Finally, you can also choose a time-lapse video options with the snapshot intervals having a wide range from half a second to even hours. The combination of the Snapdragon 410 processor and 2 gigs of RAM isn't amazing, but it does make for some reliable and slick operation for the wide majority of modern users, and when you're down at £129, that's a very respectable configuration. In two weeks, I'm pleased to say I've only really once experienced a bit of slowdown. At that point, I pressed the multitasking button and realised I had about 20 open apps and Chrome tabs, um, so I was probably pushing my luck in terms of what I could get the phone to be doing. Android Lollipop has been run over the coals a bit by some users, claiming it's a resource and battery hog. Many phones that have updated to Lollipop from KitKat have seen their battery lifespan decrease significantly. Although some have argued this is down to the OEMs not optimising their software efficiently enough. Whatever side you take in that argument, it does seem that Lollipop burns through power faster than KitKat. And I have to say, even with CyanogenS modifications, or perhaps in spite of them, I was expecting a little more distance from the 2500 mAh cell. Now there's every chance my customization of the system could be draining power, plus I did notice a significant increase in the battery life when I turned off the adaptive brightness that's defaulted in the settings and stayed away from the very high brightness level that's on by default. Either way, none of it's a deal breaker. There's still enough battery life to get you through a working day and uh, it's pretty much on a par with the world of iPhones, um, Samsung Galaxies of the lower end. Um, whilst it's not amazing, as long as you keep enough charge in it and you're vigilant in your use of the battery, then you shouldn't find yourself getting a problem. Now, if this is all we had to talk about with the Wiley Fox Swift, then it would still pretty much be at the top of my budget Android list. You really can't expect more from a phone that only asks for £129. No phone is perfect for everyone, however, I reckon this is now the bar that other budget contenders should be looking at. To finish up, the Cyanogen modifications have resulted in a system that whilst being recognisable as an Android product, has a number of valuable extras. You may never use them. In fact, it's entirely possible someone could pick up the Swift and just assume it's running stock Android if they don't delve deeper. There's nothing wrong with that, and even if it were the case, the Swift would probably still be a contender for the best budget device you can get. With the added extras in Cyanogen, however, you get a little something extra. The final word on the Wiley Fox also has to be that being different in the tech world will always be seen as being interesting. The name and logo are still practically unknown, however the style and branding are on point. There's just a touch of accessible geekiness to the Wiley Fox image that could serve the swift and upcoming storm well among those that like to be seen to be a little different, or perhaps just are a little different. This isn't the bleeding edge of technology, but it is fun. If tech is your hobby, then smartphones are now affordable enough to experiment with. Let's hope Wiley Fox can bring us some more toys to play with in 2016.